the work that I'm doing out here with Texas Lady Crushers, there's nothing that's not important about it. It's not just for our members and it's not just for those who might want to rock climb, who are ready rock climb and are looking for mentorship. I feel it's showing others that they can be the leaders in their own community. My name is Emily Hernandez, and I'm the founder of Texas Lady Crushers. On three, we will inhale, and then we're just gonna let it out. One, two, three, inhale. Let it out. My beginnings start in San Antonio, Texas. I was raised in very much a mixed culture environment. My mom is Jewish, and my dad is Catholic and Chicano. I'm an only child. As a kid, I had my own agenda. I would always want to be first in line. I always would raise my hand first. I found my opinion very early in life, and that wasn't always acceptable. My mom is a model for sure of what women are supposed to be and how they're supposed to sound and what they're supposed to say. Deep down inside, I felt that there was something that wasn't right about that for me. My nature was certainly to push back. Texas State in 2010 was where my rock climbing life started, but partying took precedence. I knew that if I wanted to make something of myself and I wanted to be seen as a professional in the climbing community, I needed to get my shit together. I stopped drinking alcohol January 7th, 2017. And that really cleared things up. I started rock climbing again. There was a shift. I did my first clinics and it all clicked. Are you ready? One, two, three. Ready or shine! <laughs> like, oh, you can be a female rock climber and you can lead women and you can guide women and this can be a thing. That is fantastic. Yeah, there you go. Get on that face. Nice. Way to work through that. Yeah. This yeah, is me. This is where I'm supposed to be. Take your time. It wasn't until the beginning of Texas Lady Crushers did I realize there was a massive issue with women, non-binary individuals, non-gender conforming humans, and those in the LGBTQIA community getting into climbing without having a cis man to do that. And call them noobs and newbies. That language is not allowed in the Texas Lady Crushers. I don't like people to be labeled based on their level of experience or lack thereof. And I ask that you're transparent with how you're feeling and if you're uncomfortable about things. You're supposed to be scared when you're rock climbing. There you go, left hand out to the crack on the left. Never pin yourself into an always rule. Always lock your locker. That's the <laughs> thing. My name is Selena Pang. Uh, I have been an Austin climber for 20 years. I'm 52 and it feels so good to be uh, involved with dynamic young women and I feel like there is a pressing need for people who are more experienced to make sure that others are safe and having fun and I just see more new people with not enough um, knowledge and mentorship. Okay, let's see, if it's not two, four, six, eight, ten. Can you tug on your harness? We are here at Enchanted Rock State Natural Area in Fredericksburg, Texas. This is the original land of the Jumanos people. We've got a group of amazing crushers that come from all walks of life. We're teaching them how to climb. If your rappel is a little, like, you know, like, jerky, like, that's okay. Marion, also go by May. My pronouns are she, they. The, the work that I do and the, the reason why these affinity groups exist is because we need to bring more diversity into those white spaces. 
go ahead and clip. All right. All too often, I am the only person of color that's you know, at the crack, then I'm showing other people of color that, hey, you can get out here. I'm showing other single moms, you can get out here and do this. My parents divorced when I was five. I always wanted to be heard. And as I got older, I realized that I don't always need to be the one speaking. I need to be the one listening. And I think women and those in BIPOC communities and the LGBTQIA community, non-binary, non-gender conforming people, I realize that we all don't get that space. And if we fight for it, we get called names like bossy or annoying. And guys don't get called bossy. Like, why not? But we get told that we need to know our place. And I'm over that, like way over that. I've been a single parent. I've been widowed by my second husband. I struggle with treatment-resistant depression. Having body dysmorphia. I was the only person of color climbing. There's just something that's so amazing about being in these spaces together and experiencing that vulnerability. When it came to Texas Lady Crushers, I think I've been able to make that space for those hard conversations. You got it. Come on to those feet. It's been such an honor to see like these young, intelligent, strong, powerhouse women, young women, you know, just really change the sport and make it welcoming. I mean, it's, uh, yeah. It's really special. We're talking about hand-sized pieces. So has everybody seen these Camelots before? Okay, there might be a route where it's like, it's perfect hands. And when you hear that lingo, that means like, when you put your hand in that crack, it just like sinks in and it feels amazing. Like, I think oh, when I climbing really became a part of my life, I just thought like, this is where I need to be, and if I'm gonna focus on being a better person, I'm focusing on being a better person first and foremost for my members, and I'm gonna listen. And if I can't help them out, I'm gonna let them know, but then I'm gonna follow it up with, but I'm gonna try to find somebody that can. And I don't think a lot of people do that. And then I hope that that ripple effect that I give them permeates throughout whatever community they're in Not only can they be leaders, but we can be cordial and we can be kind. We can learn from each other and we don't always have to be the center of attention. What we're doing it for should be.